I'm not sure how I feel about this guy. We played Juventus on match day 2, and it seemed like it was another title winning season for them as they went up 2 0 within 9 minutes. I guess I had to be positive, and maybe play some quick short passes. Bonucci playing might have helped that too, as Raspadori scored 1, then got a second 4 minutes later, lowered that down to 3 minutes later, and he's on a hat trick, but just 2 minutes after, Udoje now. He gets in behind to Raspadori! Four, net, 4 goals for Raspadori! Not quite Lewandowski, but simply incredible. Which is why it would make so much sense for him to not score in the next 10 games he played. What? Transfer wise, with 34 million to spend, we would make a net profit? After not finding any players that would immediately improve the starting 11, I decided to improve the defensive depth instead. First, Keiki came in, along with Balog, Kalulu, Kal, as well as getting a new backup keeper in January. Van Hazden, Aina, Rodriguez, and Itzel all left. The campaign was going great, winning the first four matches, which included AC Milan, who had Paul Pogba getting sent off. As I was prematurely dreaming about a Serie A title, we forgot how to score. Other than Cagliari, we should have dismantled these teams. And speaking of the Cagliari game, where we actually did score a goal, it didn't matter because we conceded this. What are you doing, guys? One of those draws were in the Europa League, which featured Hibernian, Bashak Shahir, and Pep Guardiola's Chelsea. Ah, shit. Bashak Shahir were dealt with twice while we got our due diligence versus Hibernian at home. Chelsea, on the other hand, was going to be tough. We defeated them over two legs in our second season, but only just. I also had the mindset that the group stages were meant for my bench players to play in, which is what happened in our first meeting. Chelsea didn't have the same thought process. <laughs> already hear Pep's post-match press conference after the game saying something like, Oh, they were so, so good for 30 minutes. Believe me. I had to try something different. So since they were playing a formation with a defensive midfielder, I decided to use a 4 triple 2 which meant subbing on Pellegrini. Despite Breklo and Vidovic having shocking matches, and yes, we did bring Vidovic back on loan, Pellegrini and Jao Pedro combined well together to get each other goals, bringing it back to 3-2. Unfortunately, it was too much of an ask for a third, but with the reverse fixture just a few weeks later, I already had the plan. Using the strongest players I could, in the 6th minute, Fabian Reeder would surprisingly score off a corner. Pep couldn't believe it, and for some reason, his side could not do anything against this tactic, as we won 1-0. Now, due to the Hibs draw, we did finish 2nd in the group, and 2nd would be our position in Serie A. Despite getting several wins, a draw with 10 men against Lazio, and staying undefeated, we were 1 point behind Inter before our match. I'm just glad Mancini stayed loyal for once. One, two, three, four. Mancini staying as manager for more than one year. <laughs> this guy has to be the most unloyal guy I've ever seen, but his replacement on Inter was Diego Simeone. Uh, I wish I could say it went well, but it was brutal. Yeah, we would win several matches after that, which included Revenge versus Bologna, who had defeated us in our four previous encounters. That felt good. But Roma did not, as we simply didn't show up. After a Sampdoria win, we faced AC Milan for the second time, and they were led by Garrett Southgate? Absolute joke. I don't know either. I also didn't know how to deal with Rafael Leao, as he scored 2 out of his 26 goals this season, as another L arrived. It's all good though, we had an opportunity to win a trophy, not the Coppa Italia. Inter defeated us again, but the Italian Super Cup. Oh brother! Look. I know about the reputation of Super Cups, but it's different in Italy, with most top sides being rivals with each other and a lot of pride at stake. That includes our matchup in the Derby della Mole. The chances in the first half were coming from Juventus, but at halftime, the score remained nil-nil. Then a free kick from Juventus was worrying me, and as Vlaovic stepped up, the score stayed the same. After a Deciglio sub and a missed chance by Pobega, we got another opportunity. He finds Mandragora again, Mandragora finds Ricci, Ricci back to Deciglio. Mandragora whips it in, that's a great cross. Pellegri, he heads it into the back of the net. Let's go. Another trophy in the cabinet, and after our Milan loss, we would face Juventus again. Pabeco was starting to heat up as not only did he score a brace, he would score so many goals from this point on, finishing with 20 in all competitions. Raspadori was also starting to score, getting his 11th, as he showed why he hates Juventus. While the old lady made the scoreline interesting, I was never uncomfortable. Spasolo and Benevento, that's a different story. Despite getting some great wins versus Cagliari, Verona, Fiorentina, and Lazio, we then lost to last place Brescia, putting us 11 points behind Inter for the title. I even started to face an inquest for that loss. Look, I know it's bad, but I didn't know losing to Brescia was breaking some sort of law. However, with that point gap, maybe it'd be best to focus on the Europa League. 
Finishing second meant we had to go through the round of 32, facing off against Monaco, who would finish fourth in Ligue 1. We striked first, with Pebega of course, but the game really got going in the last 10 minutes. Oh gosh, no! I immediately subbed on Lukic, who would make an instant impact. 83rd minute, Richie to Lukic. <laughs> Two more goals would fall, and as the Monaco Ultras were wiping their tears with 100 euro notes, we left with an outstanding 4-1 victory. The second leg ended in a draw, leading to Benfica in the round of 16. We were all over them, but Odysseys was putting in a performance worthy enough of becoming the 13th Olympian, and of course, Benfica would score first. As the expected goals were rising, we would finally break through in the 73rd minute. Then, Odysseys would not be able to do anything about Pabega's go-ahead goal. Pellegri soon after would seal a 3-1 victory. In the second leg, a Breclo free kick would confirm our place in the next round, where we would face off with Marseille. The French side did slightly worse than Monaco and Ligue 1, and that showed as we smashed them 7-1 on aggregate, and moved on to our second European semi-final in three years. We would be facing a recurring foe. In the first leg, I stuck with my main formation of the 4-1-3-2 using the Regista and Trocortista. We countered early on, but Brekolo somehow missed his chance. Afterwards, Chelsea should have done better with these two chances, but the match ended nil-nil. With what happened early on in the season, I used a 4 triple 2 for the home tie, and I'm not sure if it was the tactic or Pep overthinking things, but he must have not practiced defending corners, as we scored off one 11 minutes in. Then in the 28th minute, Raspadori again, great feat, Pavega, Allegri, Oh, oh my gosh! Raspadori back to Vidovic in behind to Pellegri. It's 3! Three. 3-0! Three Pep was stunned, and not only did we defeat Chelsea 3-0 going to a European final, but this derailed his season, as they would lose to Manchester City afterwards, and on the last day of the Premier League, they drew Burnley 0-0, missing out on the Champions League on goal difference. Salting in, Guardiola getting sacked. In the morning. While all of that was happening, we had a Serie A season to finish. After the inquest, we went on a romp, scoring 13 goals in 3 matches, leading to Inter. The margin was still large, with 8 points between us, and after Simeone and Mancini got into the pettiest spat I've ever seen, we got into our match. Nothing occurred until the 74th minute with Bruno Fernandes scoring this. I needed to make some changes, but before they were confirmed, Richie decided to one-up Bruno. Then, Inter collapsed just 5 minutes later with a João Pedro goal, cutting the gap down to 5 points. Simeone was stormed out of his post-match interview, and I decided to troll him in a press conference, which he didn't take well. As he added me to his hit list, he should have been more occupied about his tactics, as they lost to Napoli at home, while we defeated Spall. A week later, Spall would win their match versus Inter, giving us a chance to go top of the table. We had Atalanta, and after Darun got sent off in the 30th minute, we were on top of everything. So that's why it would make sense that Atalanta scored on their only shot of the game, giving us a 1-0 loss. On match day 36, Atalanta played Inter while we had Bologna. They played the same formation as Pep, so I used a 4 triple 2 which is rare for me to do in Syria. We should have went ahead with this chance, or even potentially this one. Instead, our defenders forgot how to mark, and Loren took them ahead. I still felt like a goal was coming for us, but I was completely wrong. As Apisher scored, we lost 2-0, and yet, so did Inter. They'd win the Coppa Italia midweek, leading to match day 37, where we defeated Roma, but Inter defeated Salernitana. They'd be our opponent on the last match day, and Inter had Bologna. Salernitana were dead and buried already, so a win was expected. We scored in the 8th minute, and it seemed all good, but then they got a highlight from kickoff. Oh my gosh, where has this come from? Aguadelo? He ch- Where the hell did that come from? Alright, let's make sure we're tight marking this Aguadelo guy. Um, Who's marking Aguadelo? The worst part is, Inter were losing and had 10 men. Now, Kalulu was playing as Singo had a season-ending injury prior to this match. Kalulu has been very reliable when he's played, and he was great here too. Until- Come on, you've had a bad game, you can save this. Then Juventus took the lead in their match, and despite not being involved in this title fight, and not even included in the title race breakdown, they got themselves into first place! We tried to fight our way back, and we scored a second goal, and a third very late. No, I'm just kidding, it's offside, so we lost. Juventus won the league, except they didn't, because Arthur Cabral scored in the 88th minute, and got a hat-trick in the 92nd minute, and despite Fiorentina getting a red card late, they defeated Juventus. So, despite Inter losing 5 out of their last 6 Serie A matches, nearly blowing an 11 point lead, they ended up winning the title by 2 points. My head was hot, as we missed 3 opportunities to win the league, but just 3 days later, we had the Europa League final versus Leicester City. The thing is, we weren't playing bad offensively, so I still trusted in the team. Leicester finished 7th in the Premier League 
and as both sides walked onto the pitch of San Mames in front of 52,000 plus, we had a chance to make history. Torino lost in this competition's final way back in 1992 to Ajax, 2-2 on away goals. That's tough. Although, it seemed like we would overcome those demons. Pellegri to Pabega, in behind to Breklo. Can Brek- Oh, tough angle. But can he find someone maybe? He finds Pabega. He scores! Thrown for us. Richie whips it in, Pellegri- Yes! What a season Pellegri had, and it seemed like we would win the trophy. Leicester were decent though, and they would finally show. <laughs> Cole Palmer. Leicester's ball. <gasps> the ref's given a penalty? No way! Oh my gosh. No keeper save it. No. 2-2. Two, two. But thankfully, there's no away goals. The match would go to extra time, and I didn't think we could stick with the same system and avoid defeat. So I switched to the 4 triple 2 which clearly has worked, just not against Bologna. I brought on Raspadori as he was benched for Brecolo. Both would be playing though, and as extra time was winding down... Alright, highlight. 119th minute. Kalulu. He's dead and he's dead tired. He finds Brecolo in behind. Brecolo cross! Yes! Respiratory! Parking this bus. Hold off. Oh my gosh, one more highlight. We are not organized at all. Luke Thomas crossing over the bar from Chinkal. Yes! We did it! An annoying end to the season in Syria, but what a run in Europe. Creating history for the club, avenging the 1992 final defeat, and all I can say now is Torino are Europa League winners. There's one more thing I still need to do.